Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So this is going to be the next video in a series about the Diamondback bug out truck modification that I made. And in the next three parts of this series, we're going to go inside the Diamondback cover to see what sort of bug out and survival supplies I have compiled within there. Because it's currently late November, this gear loadout is going to be winterized. So let's get to it. So we're going to do quite a bit of show and tell for these next three videos and then in the next series after that we're going to go inside into the truck cab and the series will continue after that with me making more large scale modifications to the truck on an ongoing basis. So stay tuned. Now this may be a no brainer for most Canadians or people in the northern United States but one of the most important vehicle preps you can add to any vehicle is going to be winter tires. Having a tire tread that's going to increase performance in icy conditions as well as having aggressive enough tread to ensure that you don't get stuck in high snow drifts. Now I've yet to decide which winter tires exactly I'm going to put on the Tacoma but I'm thinking the Wrangler Winter Duratrack are probably going to be the winner in this regard. And one of my favorite subscribers keeps heckling me about how effeminate my tires are. So this one's for you buddy. Anyways before we get into that let's go underneath the Diamondback cover shall we? Alright so Diamondback also makes these truck boxes that are custom fit to whatever truck you have. And they sent me one that I've just pretty much loaded to the nines with all manner of man gear. Not necessarily all survival gear. I got tools, you know, things that I'm gonna be using more regularly. Pretty much anything I can stuff it with. Now, because it's a truck, and I've argued this many a times, that a truck is far superior in terms of a bug out vehicle, or just a prepping type vehicle, because you have so much more storage space. All of this stuff is contained underneath the Diamondback cover, for which I can load another 1,600 pounds on top of that. Now, because I have all this stuff, plus the Diamondback cover itself, that's probably about four to 500 pounds of gear that I already have on here. So, a conservative estimate would mean that I could probably haul another 900,000 pounds. So, that's not too bad. And uh, as you can see, I have my survival roll here, but it's not complete yet. So it's not in there yet. Still working on that addition. The whole point of this video is just to give you some ideas on how to winterize your prepping vehicle. Now most of this gear is all season, but some of it is specifically geared towards winter. So I'm just gonna go through all these items. I'll post links in the description if you want more information about them or where to get them to support the channel. So lots of these things I've reviewed before. Now the great thing about having all this stuff in here is that I don't have to load the truck when I am going camping or I, when I am going out for a bush day. A lot of this stuff is getting used on a regular basis which saves me from having to constantly load it into the truck. Now one of the main things I think a prepping vehicle should have is food. And actually I don't have a lot of it just because if I was prepping for a long term scenario I would be loading the vehicle up. This is only for short term, you know, how can I make it a few days if I get stranded somewhere type thing. So first we have the tack bar. The great thing about the tack bar is it doesn't require any water, it doesn't require any cooking, you can just eat it right out of the box. It's got a pretty good lifespan. It's not gonna be affected by the cold weather at all. So it really is a great winter food prep to have. I just got some aluminum foil in there, some utensils, some survival tabs, which again, don't require anything. They're standalone, you can eat them as they are. I have some mountain house meals, rice and chicken. It's the most calorie and nutrient dense and it tastes good. Uh, the macaroni and cheese is probably the most nutrient dense, but the rice and chicken tastes better. That's uh, definitely an important thing. Just some chicken noodle soup. This stuff is really easy. You know, you just add water, heat up some water, and uh, it'll give you some sodium anyways. Lots of sodium. But uh, in Canada, we have lots of water, so we're not too worried about uh, 
taking in too much sodium. It, this really is more of a comfort food and it's cheap, it's gonna last a long time. You can't go wrong with that. I have the Hydro Heat system. Now, if you haven't seen my review on this, I encourage you to go check it out. Basically, me and Miss uh, Canadian Prepper, we did a review on it. Functions in the same way a MRE functions. I believe it's, uh, is it calcium oxide? I can't remember exactly what the chemical is that activates very much like a MRE heater and this will heat up your food so it doesn't require any fire source, any flame source. You can cook in your vehicle if you want which is why this really is uh, the ultimate uh, vehicle cooking system if you wanted to cook inside your vehicle. And this isn't only good for you know camping or SHTF or whatever, this is something you could eat out of on your lunch break. I do have just a a kettle system. I have the solo stove and the solo stove pot system. So I would use the kettle to boil water, of course. I do have some water purification implements in here. Uh, Sawyer water filter, lifesaver straw. I have some aqua tabs and an MSR water filter. This is a fire kit and it's a survivor dry box. And so in there, I have some of this awesome fat rope stuff. If you haven't seen my review on that, go check it out. Uh, he's putting them out in orange now, which I think is great, a great way to color code. Um, just have some Vaseline cotton rounds that are dipped in wax, a survival candle, some matches, some stormproof matches, thing of wet fire, and a some camp heat, some, uh, this is an alcohol, alcohol burning system so if you needed some quick heat in your vehicle. Now underneath this thing there's about four inches of space under here so I can fit some other stuff in there and I'll show you what I have under there afterwards. One thing that I forgot to mention is this badass thing right here. You're gonna want this in your vehicle. I mean there's so much you can do with a big ass wrecking bar. You can pretty much get into any place you need to between this and the bolt cutters. I mean, this in itself, most doors are bye-bye. And I think it was only 15, 20 bucks. So, you know, you should have one of those. There's no reason not to have one of those if you have a truck. Now this is the Canadian Backroad Atlas. And I also have some more in-depth uh, Backroad map books for the provinces I'm in and that I'm surrounded by. So it definitely could be useful when the GPS goes down. That's the great thing about having a truck again is the ability to carry something that big that just pertains to navigation. So pretty much this has every every possible back road that you could possibly imagine in it. So excellent for bug out SHTF type stuff. Now I use all this stuff at home too, so you know all of this stuff that you see here I use on a regular basis. I just basically keep it in the truck. This is a Lansky sharpening system. It, uh, it's a multi-stage system. It allows you to pretty much sharpen any kind of blade. So all kinds of uh, sharpening implements there. I have the new and improved survival shovel. Now you guys seen the review that I did on that survival shovel thing. And they sent me another one. And this one is a different system. So it's a little more easy to change, but it's not quite as durable as the other one. It is still very durable, far more durable than any other, you know, multi-tool shovel I've seen. But I just keep it because it has a wider mouth and it's more multi-purpose. Now I do actually keep a full size snow shovel in the truck uh, just because it's a truck and I got the space and I'm in Canada and it's gonna be snowing out so why not bolt cutters because you just never know I don't have these in here for any illegal purpose obviously but you know it's something that could very well come in handy and if you have a truck that's uh, geared towards preparedness then why not it's not illegal to carry them unless your intent is illegal, which 
I suppose uh, if you ran into the wrong cop, he could possibly bust you. I have the Silky Big Boy 2000, the Silky Ono Hatchet, I have my Fiskars, I have my Ontario SP8 Machete, Katana Boy 650, I ain't going anywhere without this thing. And the reason why I have so many wood tools is in there is pretty simple. When you go out to the bush, you need wood to stay warm. So, you know, <laughs> why not have uh, some of the most advanced wood cutting tools you can get? Uh, just a tire repair kit, pistol grip, and uh, air compressor, which has, I think it's got a flashlight on there, stuff like that. It runs off the uh, 12 volt DC. Got some nitrile gloves just in case you came up upon a scene which was contaminated or something like that or maybe you came across an accident and you know there was lots of uh, bodily fluids and stuff like that that you didn't want to touch because you still got to be mindful of that stuff when you're pulling people out of burning cars uh, you don't want to be getting uh, contaminated yourself which is very possible I have some bear spray have the Thrunite TN40, which is a great blend between flood and throw. As many of you know, I've done reviews on this thing. It's pretty badass and uh, works pretty well. The uh, Fiber Fix company sent me a bunch of this Fiber Fix stuff because they like my review so much. So uh, I just decided to throw a couple of those things in there. I do have a headlamp some knee pads, just a good pair of work gloves, probably the most used thing in the truck really. The Zero Lemon Tough Juice, fully charged, 30,000 milliamps. I also have this, uh, this thing is awesome. It's, uh, it's an Audu battery charger. And so if you're, you know, if I ever leave my lights on or something like that, and it can happen, you know, you're out in the bush, you leave your lights on and your battery's dead in eight hours. So this will boost it up and it works. I might do a review on this particular one. I've used it to boost my Jeep before, which had a battery which was entirely dead. And this thing works fabulous. Good little kit.